osmosis is not involved in what is osmosis movement of water from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration through a semi permeable membrane that is movement of water from a region of higher water potential to a region of lower water potential through a semi permeable membrane osmosis is useful in many aspects but here what is asked which is where it is not used exchange of gases through stomata is done by diffusion exchange of gases through stomata taking in of carbon dioxide giving out of oxygen or whatever it may be takes place by diffusion loss of water in the atmosphere in the form of water vapor this is nothing but transpiration so transpiration always occurs by diffusion that is higher concentration to lower concentration in equal proportions so exchange of gases through stomata which is by diffusion loss of water into the atmosphere in the form of water vapor it is also diffusion but it is called as transpiration entry of water into root cells is only by osmosis so osmosis is not involved in exchange of gases through stomata and loss of water into the atmosphere in the form of water vapor so answer is 1 1 and 2 are the correct answers the natural conditions of plasmolysis in plants normally plasmolysis does not occur in nature plasmolysis occurs only in special extreme conditions when there is a lot of temperature and saline environment in the surroundings extreme water stress does not cause any plasmolysis extreme water stress increases the amount of abscisic acid removes potassium ions from the gut cells resulting in the stomatal closure that is extreme water stress because of this reason abscisic acid is also called stress hormone clay soils clay soils does not show any cause of plasmolysis saline environment whenever in the surrounding saline environment is there plasmolysis occurs salting of pickles adding salt to pickles adding sugar to jam and jellies adding sugar to jam and jellies all these prevents the infection of bacterial and fungal spores this is due to plasmolysis so plasmolysis is mainly due to saline environment in the surroundings so answer is <coughs> extreme water stress also sometimes leads to plasmolysis saline environment definitely leads to plasmolysis so 1 and 3 will be answer the pressure required to stop the entry of a solvent into a solution through a semi permeable membrane is called this is nothing but the pressure required to stop the osmotic entry of water is called osmotic pressure so the pressure that is required to stop the osmotic entry of water into the cells is called osmotic pressure so osmotic pressure is the pressure with which the entry of water into the cells is stopped so pressure required to stop the entry of solvent into a solution through a semi permeable membrane is not called wall pressure tergar pressure pressure potential what is pressure potential when a when water enters the cells by osmosis protoplasm get diluted whenever protoplasm get diluted the concentration decreases water potential increases the sum of increase in the water potential due to the entry of water into the cells is called pressure potential when the water enter the cell when pressure potential increases the protoplasm starts creating a sort of pressure on cell wall this is called tergar pressure when tergar pressure is continuous at one point of time the cell wall also starts creating a sort of pressure on the protoplasm that is called wall pressure so wall pressure <coughs> tergar pressure pressure potential are related to one another so the pressure required to stop the entry of a solvent into a solution through a semi permeable membrane is called and osmotic entry of water is stopped by osmotic pressure first option the pi and p of cells a b c d are as follows cell a pi is minus 20 bars p is 18 bars cell b pi is minus 30 bars p is 20 bars cell c minus 15 bars p is 4 bar cell d minus 25 bars p is 5 bar are in the cells in the correct sequence of their water movement from lower to higher minus 1 is maximum minus 2 is next minus 3 is next minus 4 is next so here the as water movement minus 20 to 18 means minus 2 bars Minus thirty to twenty means minus ten bars. Minus fifteen plus four is minus eleven bars. 
minus 25 plus 5 plus 5 is minus 20 bar. So, A is maximum, then is B, then is C, then is D. So, answer is A to B, B to C, C to D or A to B to C to D. This is according to the water potential gradients, water potential differences. So, cell A minus 2 bars, cell B minus 10 bars, cell C minus 11 bars, cell D minus 20 bars. So, moment of water is always from A to B, B to C, C to D, first option. Match the following and choose the correct sequence, psi is equal to 0, pi is equal to 0, p is equal to 0, tau is, tau is nothing but metric potential is nearly 0, hydrated living plant cell, flaccid cell, pure water, turgid cell, A is 4, pi is equal to 0 in a fully turgid cell, sorry, psi is equal to 0 in a fully turgid cell, pi is equal to 0 in pure water, in pure water osmotic potential is 0 p is equal to 0 in a flaccid cell, in a completely cell where water is lost. That means, in a plasmalized cell pressure potential is completely 0. Tau is nearly 0 hydrated living plant cell, T is nearly 0. So, A4, B3, C2, D1, fourth option. <laughs> it is an assertion reasoning question. In a living hydrated cell water potential is sum of osmotic potential and pressure potential. In a living hydrated cell, water potential is sum of that means psi is equal to pi plus p. Psi is water potential, p is osmotic potential, pi is osmotic potential, p is pressure potential. The sum of osmotic potential and pressure potential is equal to water potential. So, Assertion is correct. In a living hydrated cell, water potential is the sum of osmotic potential and pressure potential. Correct. Reason. Only osmotic potential and pressure potential are the integral parts of water potential. This is wrong. Only osmotic potential and pressure potential are not the integral parts of water potential. They are all separate. They are caused one reason to other. So, A is true or is false. Third option. Pickles can be stored for longer periods. Salting of pickles plasmalizes the bacteria and fungi. Pickles can be stored for longer period. How? By salting of the pickles plasmalizes the bacteria and fungal spores. Whenever the pickles are salted, given or surrounded or salt is added to the surface, whenever fungal spore or bacterial spore comes and falls there, because the salt concentration in the surrounding is more water is lost from the spores and spores will die. So, pickles can be stored for longer periods. Why? Because salting of the pickles plasmalizes the bacteria and fungi. Answer is 1. A and R are correct. R is the correct explanation of A. Plants mostly absorb water by osmotic mechanism. This is correct. During water absorption, usually metabolic energy is not utilized. This is also correct. So, plants mostly absorb water by osmotic mechanism is not depending on during water absorption, metabolic energy is not utilized because it is passive absorption, osmotic mechanism, the absorption of water is taking place. So, plant mostly absorb water by osmotic mechanism is correct. During water absorption, metabolic energy is not utilized is correct. And as metabolic energy is not utilized during water absorption, plants mostly absorb water by osmotic mechanism is wrong. So, A and R are correct. R is not the correct explanation of A. Second option. Another assertion is needed. When pea seeds, paddy grains and castor seeds, when pea seeds, pisum sativum, paddy grains and castor seeds are separately soaked in equal volumes of water, pea seeds show more imbib imbibition. Proteins show high amount of imbibition than carbohydrates and lipids. It is a very, very important aspect. Protein seeds show more imbibition than starchy grains and lipid components, whatever it may be. So, imbibition is maximum in protein. So, when pea seeds and paddy grains and castor, pea seeds are proteins, paddy grains are rice, castor are lipids, are separately soaked in water, equal volumes of water, pea seeds show more imbibition and they swell more. Why? Proteins show high amount of imbibition than carbohydrates and lipids. So, A and R are correct. 
R is the correct very important bit is this one A and R are correct R is not the correct R is the correct explanation of A here proteins show maximum imbibition than any other food stuff either carbohydrate or lipid based on that this assertion reasoning is given first option passage cells are involved in transporting water passage cells passage cells are involved in transporting water not from epidermal cells to xylem through cortex of root xylem of leaf to epidermal cells of leaf xylem of leaf to epidermal cells of leaf from root to stem from stem to leaf from epidermal cells to xylem through cortex of the root so first option is correct not second option from epidermal cells to xylem of root so what are passage cells in the endodermis there are some specialized cells which do not contain any casparian bands they are called passage cells so passage cells are involving in transport till the soil to root hair root hair to epidermis epidermis to cortical cells water movements occur by diffusion from higher concentration to lower concentration as the endodermis contain casparian thickenings water cannot pass they have to go to pericycle so they pass through passage cells that is the endodermal cells without casparian thickenings they enter the pericycle from xylem they are sucked so from epidermal cells to xylem through cortex of the root ascent of sap is best explained by there are so many components present proper explained to explain the ascent of sap mass flow hypothesis is for movement of food from leaves to various parts protoplasmic streaming hypothesis is also explanation of phloem phloem involving in transportation of food the best answer for ascent of sap is best explained by is cohesion tension theory the phenomenon plays a role in ascent of sap in plants ascent of sap means movement of water movement of water with solutes movement of water with solutes is called sap from root tip to stem apex against earth gravitational force is called ascent of sap so whenever leaves loses water by transpiration whenever leaves loses water by transpiration a sort of negative hydrostatic pressure is developed in the mesophylls from the mesophylls the negative hydrostatic pressure is sent to midrib midrib supplies water to mesophyll and it will get negative hydrostatic pressure this negative hydrostatic pressure is now sent to stem from stem to root root starts absorbing water and water is transported due to cohesion and adhesion so this phenomenon plays a role in ascent of sap in plants is main is transpiration not respiration or photosynthesis or absorption of minerals main 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 aspect which makes a plant to show ascent of sap is transpiration cavitation refers to cohesion tension theory explains that due to transpiration pull water is absorbed whenever water is absorbed into the xylem because of their maximum adhesion and cohesion they form a continuous water column and sent to so many places by ascent of sap but many scientists raised objections about this they proposed that when a small air bubble is formed the water column is gone so formation of air bubble is called cavitation formation of air bubble is called cavitation destruction of water column due to the formation of air bubble is called embolism so these two are the concepts cavitation and embolism formation of air bubble in the continuous water column disturbing the continuous movement of water column is called cavitation the disturbing of water column due to the formation of air bubble is called as embolism so here the question is <coughs> cavitation refers to formation of pits in cell wall is wrong formation of cavities in the tree trunk is wrong formation of air spaces in the soil is wrong formation of air bubbles in the water cylinder of xylem is correct so third option is correct obstruction to the flow of water in the vessel of xylem due to cavitation is called so whenever is water is moving in a path in the form of a continuous water column from one place to other place 
definitely whenever air bubble is formed cavitation occurs and once the cavitation occurs the continuous movement of water stops this is popularly called not catabolism or anabolism or symbolism it is embolism so obstruction to the flow of water in the vessels of xylem due to cavitation is called as embolism fourth option there are these are more efficient water conducting channels in plants more efficient water conducting channels tracheids vessels sieve cells sieve tubes answer is vessels previously scientists thought that tracheids because of bordered pits are more stable in the conduction of water in pteridophytes and gymnosperms it is also raised during ascent of sap explanation but tracheids are slowly replaced by vessels another disadvantage in tracheids is the end walls are closed the advantage in vessels is end walls are open and they are present as a continuous channel from root tip to stem apex so vessels second option arrange the following events of ascent of sap in a sequence with respect to cohesion tension theory cohesion tension theory was proposed by dickson and he told that transpiration is responsible for this once transpiration takes place then water potential decreases in the <coughs> mesophyll cell then is transported to root and many other things so answer for this is first option second one first always transpiration loss of water only creates pressure to absorb water next is decrease in water potential of mesophyll cells whenever water is lost from the mesophyll cells of leaves water potential gradient is formed that water potential gradient is transported to the stem from the stem it is transported to the root then root absorbs water so first transpiration then decrease in the water potential of mesophyll cells then tension in xylem whenever decrease in the water potential of mesophyll cell there will be a tension in the xylem and finally pulling of water of root xylem so answer is 2 4 3 1 is the correct sequence of events that occur during cohesion tension theory the theory proposed by dickson to explain ascent of sap is based on dickson proposed cohesion tension theory was proposed by dickson this theory states that three physical forces help in ascent of sap one is <coughs> transpiration pull the other is cohesion between water molecules and adhesion between water molecules so these three play a vital role in ascent of sap all the three physical forces transpiration pull cohesion between water molecules adhesion between water molecules <coughs> so cohesion of water adhesion of water and other things so answer is 1 2 3 all the three fourth option the upward movement of water in xylem of plant against gravitational force is mainly due to is mainly due to cohesion of water molecules cohesion force between water molecule and transpiration pull 1 and 3 not that much of adhesive force but cohesive force of water and transpiration pull takes the water to various places so second option 1 and 3 <coughs> this is an assertion reasoning question mesophyll cells have lowest water potentials in the plants water of mesophyll cells is evaporated during transpiration so whenever mesophyll uh, continuously whenever sunlight falls on the leaf the mesophyll cells lose the water by transpiration intracellular water always goes out through stomata by diffusion from higher concentration to lower concentration so mesophyll cells have lowest water potential in a plant is correct why they have lowest water potential in the plant because water of mesophyll cells is evaporated continuously during transpiration because the water of mesophyll cell in the leaf is evaporated continuously during transpiration the mesophyll cells have lowest water potentials in the plant so both are related to each other so a and r are true r is the correct explanation of a another assertion reason in the laboratory experiments to demonstrate ascent of sap the twig of plant is cut under the water definitely it has to be cut under the water why the cavitation in xylem vessels can be avoided by doing so when it is done in the external environment there is chance of formation of bubbles in xylem 
embolism occurs and water movement may be stopped. The same if cut under the water, um, cavitation can be minimized. So, in the laboratory experiments to demonstrate adherence of sap, the twig of plant is always cut under the water. Why? Cavitation in xylem vessels can be avoided by doing so, because to avoid cavitation only the plants are cut under the water. So, A and R are correct, R is the correct explanation of A, first option. Another assertion reasoning, ascent of sap is due to pull, ascent of sap is definitely due to pull, that pull is called transpiration pull. Due to transpiration tension is created in xylem vessels, definitely transpiration makes a tension in mesophyll cells, then to xylem, then to root, then to sorry, then to stem, then to root, immediately plant starts absorbing water. So, ascent of sap is definitely due to pull and why this pull due to transpiration tension is created in the xylem vessels that is why this pull occurs. So, A and R are correct, R is the correct explanation of A, first option. This is another assertion reasoning, during cavitation ascent of sap is hampered, hampered means stop, during cavitation hampered, ascent of sap is hampered means stop. During cavitation water takes a sideward course, during cavitation ascent of sap is stopped or disturbed or hampered is wrong, but during cavitation one path is stopped water will take a numerous alternative paths. So, during cavitation ascent of sap is hampered is wrong, but during cavitation water takes a sideward course is correct. So, A is false, R is true. Vessels are more efficient than tracheids in ascent of sap. Vessels are more efficient than tracheids in ascent of sap is proved. Tracheids are present in angiosperms. So, angiosperms also contain tracheids along with vessels. Vessels are efficient in the tracheids than tracheids for ascent of sap is not linked with tracheids are present in angiosperms. So, both are not related, but both are same. Tracheids are both are almost same answer or what you call not same, they are related answers. Vessels are more efficient than tracheids in ascent of sap is correct. Tracheids are present in angiosperms is correct, but because the tracheids are present in angiosperms, vessels are not efficient in the transportation. So, answer will be A and R are correct, R is not the correct explanation of A. Scotoactive stomata are shown by stomata based on their opening two types, photoactive, scotoactive. Photoactive stomata open during day and closes at nights. This is a common concept in almost all plants common in all plants. Scotact, it is reverse, stomata open during nights and closes during day. For this example, succulents like bryophyllum opensia. In bryophyllum and opensia, you will find scotoactive. What is scotoactive? Stomata open during night times and closes during day times. Photoactive stomata open during day times. This is the most common concept in almost all the plants. Photoactive, a rare thing that is seen in bryophyllum and opensia is stomata open during night times. So, it is unsafe to sleep under any C3 plant in the night times because it liberates carbon dioxide, we liberate carbon dioxide, it is dangerous. It is safe to sleep along with any bryophyllum or cactus plant in a closed room also because whatever carbon dioxide we release during the sleep is taken by plants and heatness is decreased. So, scotoactive stomata are useful, scotoactive movement of stomata is shown by solanum maize mulberry wrong, answer is a succulent plant like bryophyllum. The mineral element that mainly regulates stomatal movement. <coughs> stomatal movements are different during daytime and nights. During daytime, what happens? 
the protons moves out by utilizing ATP active. When protons are moving out, K plus ions in the surroundings enter the God cells. Along with K plus ions, Cl minus ions enters the God cells to maintain the chemical equilibrium. It is not sufficient. Malic acid enters the God cell, converts into malate ions and H plus. In this condition, concentration increases, water moves into the God cells by endosmosis and stomata opens. This is happened during day times. In the night times what happens? Whatever protons move outside now enters the God cells. So, because of that K plus and C L minus moves out, malate combines with H plus and forms malic acid moves out of God cells into the surrounding cells. Concentration decreases, water moves out of the God cells, eggs osmosis occurs and stomata closes. This stomatal index controlled by potassium ion was proposed by Levitt. So, potassium ion controlling the stomatal movement in plants was proposed by Levitt and proved by Bowling. So, for this the answer is the mineral element that mainly regulates the stomatal movement is potassium ion, not calcium, magnesium or manganese, it is potassium ion. During stomatal opening, pumping of the following into subsidiary cells is active method. Entry of Cl minus coming out of Cl minus is passive without utilizing metabolic energy. Entry of K plus, removal of K plus from the God cells is passive without utilizing metabolic energy. Malatians enters the malatians comes out as malic acid without passive that is without using metabolic. During stomatal opening pumping of the following into subsidiary cells is always active is H plus. H plus are pumped out by active method utilizing ATP H plus ions. Second up. Decrease in the water potential in God cells is due to decrease in. <coughs> Decrease in the water potential of God cells is due to decrease in metric potential, pressure potential, solute potential all because of solute potential. Solute potential increases and water potential decreases. So, solute potential. During stomatal movement, closure movement, the following ions is an active process. Stomatal closure, the movement of ions is an active process. K plus ions out of God cells, Cl minus ion out of God cells, protons entering the God cells, none of these. None of these is active methods, all are passive methods, entry of protons, removal of K plus, Cl minus, all comes under. The organic acid involves in the regulation of stomatal movement, just now I told, malic acid. Malic acid enters the God cells and divides into malate ions and H plus ions in the morning times. Potassium combines with malate to form potassium malate, potassium combines with chlorine to form potassium chloride. Ultimately, concentration of God cells increases, concentration increases means osmotic potential or what you call water potential decreases. Water potential decreases, water starts moving out of the God cells by exosmosis. Water potential is more in the cells, less in the outer environment, so water enters the God cells. Turgidity increases, stomata opens. During night times, the same malic acid, malate ions combines with H plus become malic acid and this malic acid comes out into the cells either stored in the subsidiary cells or thrown out of the God cells nearer to the process that is Krebs cycle and they involve in Krebs cycle. So, the organic acid involves in regulating stomatal movements is malic acid second one. During night times the malic acid of God cells is disposed of by the operation of so, during night times the malic acid of God cells is disposed of by the operation of TCA cycle. TCA cycle is tricarboxylic acid cycle or Krebs cycle. Malic acid directly involved in Krebs cycle where the last fourth oxidation which converts into oxaloacetic acid resulting in the liberation of NADH2 and oxaloacetic acid combines with acetyl CoA to start again the Krebs cycle. So, not C4 cycle, not C3 cycle, not glycolysis, but it is TCA cycle, tricarboxylic acid cycle. 
Stomatal movement is closely associated with stomatal movement is opening and closure of stomata. It is closely associated with solute levels of guard cells correct. Metabolic changes in guard cells correct. Colloidal levels in guard cells is wrong. So, solute levels of guard cells when solute is more concentration is less water moves out of guard cells. When solute is more concentration is less water enters into the guard cell. So, solute level of guard cells is very important. Metabolic changes in guard cells. What are metabolic changes in guard cells? Protons moving out actively, K plus Cl minus moving in passively, malic acid coming inside converting into malate, high ions and H plus ions. All these are metabolic changes. So, answer is 1 and 2. Solute levels of guard cells and metabolic changes in guard cells ultimately help in stomatal movements. Scotoactive stomata. Scotoactive stomata means the stomata which opens during night times and closes during day times. It is found in all succulent xerophytic plants and also many xerophytic plants. Again, aloe, acacia. So, aloe, again, acacia, all the three show scotoactive stomata. So, answer is 1, 2, 3. These ions are actively pumped during stomatal opening. The ions which are actively pumped out during stomatal opening are 1 and 2, K plus ions and H plus ions, Cl minus ions are pumped by passive methods. So, K plus and H plus, particularly H plus, sometimes K plus. So, 1 and 2. During stomatal movement, the functions of malic acid. During stomatal movement, the function of malic acid. A malic acid present in the subsidiary cells enter the guard cells breaks up into malate ions and H plus. What are those H plus? They are compensating the loss of protons from the guard cells. The protons move out of guard cells actively. So, loss of protons will be there in the guard cells that must be compensated. That is compensated by malic acid which dissociates into malate ions and H plus ions. It is not balancing the influx of K plus ions or balancing the influx of Cl minus ions. Balancing of K plus and Cl minus ions is not that required by malic acid. So, malic acid's speciality is 1 serving as proton donor, 2 balancing the influx of K plus ions. Balancing the influx of Cl minus ions, they come and uh, combine with potassium to form potassium chloride. It is not sufficient to balance these gromatal cell or guard cells ionic balance. So, definitely during stomatal movement the functions of malic acids are serving as proton donor and balancing the influx of K plus ions. During stomatal movement potassium ions are balanced by during stomatal movement potassium ions are balanced by potassium ions enter the guard cells to balance the potassium ions first Cl minus and enters the guard cells then malate ions come into the guard cells. So, not sulphate ions, malate ions and chloride ions. So, answer is 1, 1 and 2. Chloride ions first enter, it is not enough to balance the K plus accumulation. So, immediately malic acid in the surrounding cells enter the guard cells, breaks up into malate ions and H plus ions. Ultimately, malate and chloride ions balances the accumulation of potassium ions in the guard cells. During night times, malic acid of guard cells is disposed of by. During night times, malic acid of guard cells is disposed of by. Efflux into guard cells is correct. Oxidation through TCA cycle is correct. Forming pyruvic acid by oxidative decarboxylation is wrong. Forming pyruvic acid by oxidative decarboxylation occurs only in the bundle sheet cells of C4 plants. Efflux into guard cells is correct. Oxidation through TCA cycle is correct. So, during night times, malic acid of guard cells is disposed of by efflux into guard cells and oxidation through TCA cycle. 1 and 2 are correct. First option. These changes bring out stomatal opening. These changes bring out stomatal opening. 1 high pH. High pH always acidity is more, concentration is more, water potential is less. Water potential is less means in the surrounding cells water potential is more and concentration is less water enters the guard cells. So, high pH will be correct. 
high targar pressure of god cells whenever water enters the god cells then targar pressure increases osmotic pressure decreases so high targar pressure in god cells is also correct so answer is second one one and two high wall pressure of subsidiary cells is wrong high ph high targar pressure in god cells ultimately leads to stomatal opening arrange the following in a sequence during stomatal opening influx of cl into god cells influx of k plus into god cells decrease in the water potential of god cells increase in the targar pressure of god cells third one first second influx of k plus into god cells one when k plus enter the god cells along with k plus cl minus enters the god cells then three decrease in the once k plus and cl minus accumulation starts concentration increases water potential decreases so decrease in the water potential decrease in the water potential means increase in targar pressure increase in targar pressure takes place so ultimately the answer is 2 1 3 4 <coughs> match the following and choose the correct one active entry of ions into god cells active entry of ions into subsidiary cells passive entry of ions into subsidiary cells passive entry of ions into god cells a4 active entry of ions into god cells is k plus ions active entry of ions into subsidiary cells is h plus passive entry of ions into the subsidiary cells is malate ions and passive entry of ions into the god cells is cl minus ions so first option a5 sorry a4 b3 c1 d2 <coughs> this is another matching match the following and choose the correct match this is regarding the factors controlling the rate of transpiration type of influence on transpiration list 1 list 2 is factor complex influence three fold effect inversely proportional effect directly proportional effect this type factors 2 are list 2 with factors temperature root shoot ratio light humidity of air and wind so a5 complex influence is shown by wind why because when the gentle breeze is there stomata opens and transpiration is maximum when high wind velocity is there stomata closes and transpiration is stop three fold effect three fold effect is b3 light light always controls permeability of cell membrane activity of enzymes and also entry of water maintaining the temperature of the leaf so temperature of the leaf permeative permeable permeability of cell membrane enzyme activity is controlled by light that's why it is called three fold effect inversely proportional effect four whenever humidity in the air is more leaf is always wet so rate of transpiration definitely decreases so humidity in air is inversely proportional to the rate of transpiration whenever humidity is less transpiration is more whenever humidity is more transpiration is less directly proportional effect is root shoot ratio whenever root shoot ratio is more the transpiration is more whenever shoot root ratio is more the transpiration is less so root shoot ratio is directly influenced so answer is a5 b3 c4 d2 ions type of entry into the cell active or passive methods you have to identify the correct items with respect to stomatal movement k plus ions entry into the god cells active process is correct cl minus entry into the god subsidiary cells active process is wrong h plus entry into the god cells passive method wrong malate ions entry into the subsidiary cells passive process is active process is wrong so choose the two correct items means fourth one one and three k plus ions entry into the god cells active cl minus entry into the subsidiary cells active wrong h plus entry into the god cells passive method is correct and entry into the subsidiary cells malate ions active process is wrong now factors involved nature of influence and role light three fold effects increases temperature complex promotes the transpiration in gentle breeze wind it is a complex com complex influence promotes the transpiration in gentle breeze atmospheric pressure inversely proportional at low atmospheric pressure increases air density root shoot ratio direct influence and high root area provides less water for transpiration the correct are light light has three fold effect on the rate of transpiration it increases the temperature definitely temperature is increased 
the <coughs> leaf environment is uh, permeable it is controlled and enzyme activity is controlled. Then wind complex it is winds effect is always complex because it promotes transpiration in gentle breeze whenever breeze is gentle stomata opens whenever wind is fast stomata closes and rate of transpiration stop. Atmospheric pressure inversely proportional low atmospheric pressure increases high density is wrong. Low atmospheric pressure decreases air density not increases air density. So, rate of transpiration is inversely proportional to two factors one is humidity in air the other is atmospheric pressure. When our atmospheric pressure is less the rate of transpiration is more that is the reason why plants growing in higher altitudes that is on the hills show various xerophytic adaptations to control the rate of transpiration. Root shoot ratio direct influence high root area provides less water absorption is wrong high root area provides more water absorption is correct. This is an assertion reasoning transpiration shows evil effect on plants excess transpiration then water absorption impairs physiological process in plants. Transpiration is very popularly called <coughs> transpiration is popularly called as a necessary evil by Curtis and an unavoidable event by <coughs> Barnes. Transpiration causes loss of water. Whenever water is lost, plants wants to absorb water. Whenever plants starts absorbing water, that is called ascent of sap and other takes place. So, transpiration nearly 100 percent of water is absorbed by plants, only 5 percent is utilized in metabolic activities, remaining are lost by transpiration. So, transpiration shows evil effect on plants is correct because excess of transpiration then water absorption impairs physiological process is also correct. So, A and R are correct, R is the correct explanation of A. This is about water relations. Next class we discuss mineral nutrition and enzymes.